Who else has the asparagus gene? You know what I'm talking about. I don't know what percentage of people have the gene that makes it very noticeable that you have eaten asparagus pretty immediately. But uh, yeah, I know I certainly do. Um, there are lots of people that I know that also have that gene, but I'm just curious about what the percentage spread of the viewers who watch this also have the gene. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. We are at week 13 of the 52 Sunday Dinners Project. I have just returned home yesterday evening from a two-week Italian vacation with Nani, and I am ready to hop right back in, and we are going to continue recreating all of these recipes from the 1920s. On the menu today, we're skipping over an appetizer for this menu again, and we're starting right in on our main course with baked fish, and on top of that, we'll be serving a Spanish sauce. On the side, we'll have creamed macaroni and also stuffed peppers. For dessert, we'll be serving cottage pie and on top of that goes a lemon sauce. Our salad today is asparagus tips with mayonnaise and there is no recipe for that, so we're just gonna kind of wing it. Of course, we always have coffee. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. My name is Ashley, I'm a registered dietitian and I love everything vintage and food. I've combined those two things to bring you this. This is the 52 Sunday Dinners Project where we found this cookbook, the Women's World Magazine 52 Sunday Dinners, and we have decided to recreate just about every single recipe every week in these menus. If you'd like to know a little bit more about this project, you can refer back to week one where I give a little more of a thorough explanation about it. Now, if any of this sounds good to you, I'm gonna slap an apron on and why don't you join me in the kitchen? For our cottage pudding, I have our two tablespoons of butter softened here in the bowl. I have the cup of sugar that we're going to mix together. In with this, we'll cream it up and then add one egg, a cup of milk, and once we have combined all of those thoroughly, I have sifted some gluten-free flour and I've used the Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour for this and in it already is the salt and the baking powder. If this is your first time watching and you're a little bit confused about why I'm using gluten-free flour instead of regular white flour as the recipe calls for, I am currently not able to eat gluten for medical reasons and I would like to be able to give an honest opinion of how this tastes and I don't have another taster available for on camera at the moment. So we're just kind of working with what we've got. So all of you who are out there that also have to eat a gluten-free diet, uh, here's to you. And hopefully you're able to see a little bit more of things that you can eat and maybe some things you can adapt to, uh, I think make something pretty similar to what was being made back then. and probably the people back then who couldn't eat gluten but didn't realize it would probably appreciate being able to do it this way as well. I have my cake pan here and I have taken many of your advice and I put some parchment paper in the bottom. Hopefully it'll make this come out a little bit easier. And I think this will all fit in here. We're gonna find out. Cottage pudding, I assume they mean pudding just like a dessert because this appears that it's going to be like a cake. Looking at it myself and looking at, I guess, the end result and the recipe, I, I, I want to have added vanilla to this. Obviously, it does not call for vanilla. It doesn't want me to add vanilla, and so we aren't. However, that's just... My, my brain wants to add either vanilla or lemon to this. Now we're serving it with a lemon sauce, so I suppose maybe that's what we'll get the flavor afterward, but just, uh, I don't know, we'll see once it's done. I'm sure it won't need it. It'll probably be just wonderful and lovely as is, and probably is not traditional to add the vanilla to it, but I really want to. 
you may notice about a lot of these recipes, there aren't often measurements. Um, I, I guess I shouldn't say that. There are often measurements given, but sometimes there aren't. It, it'll just tell you to mix this ingredient in, um, or like with the, the peppers, it just says to use sweet peppers. It doesn't say how many. It gives you specific measurements on the stuffing for the peppers, but it doesn't tell you how many peppers that stuffing stuffs. For this, it doesn't tell you how much boiling water to add. I assume it's just the amount that seems appropriate for how thin or thick you would like the sauce. I'm using the gluten-free Namaste flour for this, not the King Arthur. So we're using a couple different flours in this menu. And we're just gonna sift all of this together. We'll juice the lemon here, and uh, I can't decide which reamer I want to use. And one of the last videos that we made, I had my Shalane Sunkissed Reamer. That's my very favorite one. Maybe we'll just break out the white one, the regular white milk glass one for this. All right, I think this is the temperature I desire. We do need to cook this for about three minutes, it says. So we'll get that fire started up and cook it and we'll see what consistency it is coming out after three minutes. Okay, I think after a few minutes, the consistency of this sauce seems pretty perfect. This is great. It smells really nice too. I'm again tempted, I won't change the recipe, but I did zest all of the uh, peel off of that lemon and I really want to add it into this sauce and kick it up a notch and maybe I'll do that after I finish tasting how it originally should taste, but when I do all of my leftovers, maybe I'll add a little bit of that lemon peel just to kick it up for myself later. All right, we have our bacon. I'm using bacon instead of salt, fat, pork, and I have my onion minced up. Once this browns a little, I'll put this in. And then our tomatoes. We have a can of stewed tomatoes, so I have opened those up and we'll put a cup of those inside, and then we'll get it all mixed up and ready to put on this fish. We have our green onions here. It doesn't say how many it wants us to make, but if this is supposed to be for six people, we cut them in half. I assume each person gets a half, so I believe three is how many we should make. These sound like they'll be kind of decent to me. All the ingredients look promising. Uh, I'm not sure what deviled ham is, and I've never had ham stuffed in my peppers, but I anticipate liking it, and if I don't love it myself, maybe some friends and neighbors will. I'll give it to them. I have the water to pour over. And then we're just gonna let these sit and soak for 15 minutes and soften the skin up. Hopefully they'll be easy to get the skin off after that. These have been sitting in this water for about 15 minutes, but I think the water cooled down too fast and they're slightly wrinkled up, but not really. The skin is not easily peeled off. So I think I'm going to maybe throw them in this water into the oven for a few minutes and Maybe that will help. It kind of looks and smells a bit like cat food or dog food. I assume it will be much tastier though. Oh, you know what else it kind of smells like and it, the inside looks like, which makes absolute sense. Has anybody ever eaten those Vienna sausages before? Um, my One of my sisters used to, we would eat them together and our, if I'm remembering correctly, we. We talked about the last, maybe a couple times ago when we were visiting, we talked about the Vienna sausages and Mr. Vintage Dietitian had to try them. Uh, but I remember always wanting to get the middle one out first. All the sausages were around the outside in a ring and then there's one in the middle and the middle one was always the best one. And I always wanted to get that one first. Okay, now this has come out wrinkled up a little bit. It's still, the thin skin on the outside does not want to come off. Now I've never done this by boiling my peppers before. I'm gonna try and cut them in half instead of peeling that skin off first and see if maybe I can get it off easier in pieces. 
But when I want to get the skin off of my peppers, I make if I make roasted red peppers, what I do is just take the pepper and stick it, like turn the fire on my stove and stick it right on top of the burner and for just a few minutes until it's charred or a few seconds probably actually, until it's charred and then after it's been charred on all different sides. I put it inside of a paper bag for, I don't know how long, till it cools maybe, and then I peel the, the skin off after that. But this skin just does not want to let go. I'm really, I'll get the seeds out, I guess, and then maybe try again but it, it doesn't seem to want to come off. So we may be eating these stuffed peppers with the thin skin on the outside still on, which is fine. Usually if I make stuff, regular stuffed peppers in my house, I, well, regular for me at least, or any that I have eaten from other people, the, the skin is left on the outside. So I have no problems eating the skin. I'll just if it doesn't come off here, I'll just pretend when I'm eating it. I'll imagine that it's thinner to give you a better answer on how it would be. I looked up the size of the cans of deviled ham in the 1920s, and it looked like they were about five and a half ounces. And these cans are four and a quarter ounces, so I did open up another can and add one and a quarter more ounces to this just to make it closer to authentic or as close as possible, as, as close as I could get to authentic. To me, it looks like a good amount of ham. I'm not exactly sure how much it should be in there, but it looks like if I were going to stuff this with turkey or uh, beef or chicken or what whatever it would be, this looks like it's a good amount of meat to the rest of the ingredients in the stuffing. In the last several videos, many of you have mentioned that you love this glass double boiler here. And I think I've also mentioned it in several of the comments, but I figured I'd just say it out loud for everybody who wanted to know what this is, how I got it, where I got it. It's just a Pyrex. I assume it's a double boiler. It doesn't say that, but just the way that it stacks, that's how I use it. I got it at an auction in a box lot, probably for like the whole box for 10 bucks or something. And it was probably sitting at the bottom and that's how I ended up with this. I didn't buy it on purpose, but I love it. And if you're wanting to look it up, uh, the numbers on the band are 6283. So if I assume if you look up on eBay, Pyrex glass double boiler number 6283, you might be able to find it if you're interested. But for this sauce, I've got my milk here, putting it in the double boiler. I'll use that same Namaste flour to thicken with the butter in this sauce. The pasta that I've used, I bought several different gluten-free elbow macaroni last night and I'm gonna go with the Barilla just because I think it'll probably be the closest maybe. I have a chickpea pasta and maybe a great value brown rice also I think, um, but we're gonna go with the Barilla because I think it'll be the closest to regular macaroni noodles and hopefully it'll be close enough to have a good comparison for this. I think this sauce is at a good thickness Get it poured over some macaroni here. And those same breadcrumbs that we used to stuff the, the peppers, that's what I'm going to use to sprinkle on top of this creamed macaroni as the buttered crumbs. One would assume they mean buttered breadcrumbs, not buttered floor crumbs or couch crumbs. Well, with this asparagus, I wanna start with the fact that there is no recipe. It just says asparagus tips with mayonnaise. I assume we're supposed to eat them raw. Uh, I have had asparagus raw in salads before and it's delicious. I'm going to assume that that's how they want it here. So just the tip, I assume, with mayonnaise. Uh, the woody ends, normally I would just 
throw away probably, or compost that is, feed them to my ducks. However, next week we have a cream of asparagus soup on the menu and it wants us to use the ends. So I'm just going to save these ends for that soup and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make good use of it and not waste it. I also don't know how I'm supposed to present these tips if it's just supposed to be kind of laying there with some mayonnaise on the side like this and some mayonnaise and you just dip like that or if there's mayonnaise on the bottom maybe we tie it together and stick it like this so it stands I'm not sure I think I'll just put it on the side and put a little mayonnaise there you tell if you eat this or make this yourself tell me what you guys do at home for this and if you're on the Facebook group I would love it also if you do make this or actually anything else that you make include pictures post some pictures of some of the things that you're making and how it looks compared to the things that we make or if it's not anything close to what we're making it's just something that you want to share we love hearing your stories and seeing the pictures of what you make so join the Facebook group and join the conversation there. For our fish, I chose haddock. I couldn't get a full haddock or a whole haddock fish, but I did get the fillets. We got some skin on and I, I will say it kind of stinks. I mean, I know fish stinks, but ugh, it is not smelling good in this kitchen right now. Each of these packages is about a pound, so I did get two packages and we'll get this floured up and cooked after we pat it dry. And I think this seems like a pretty standard way to make fish. Maybe not the, I guess not the boiling it, but the, the patting it dry and breading it seems normal to me. But after that, I would probably just pan fry it. I wouldn't bake it, but we're gonna see how this goes is this baking fish ooh, 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 ooh it stinks Ugh. baking fish in water like this is this something that you guys do at home or is this something that has maybe was done before and has gone by the wayside And the flower here is the Namaste flower again, in case you're wondering. Just a little bit of salt and pepper in there. Let's bread you up. If you notice in this recipe, as we talk about inconsistencies and in recipes, it does not tell us at what temperature to bake this at. And I know it doesn't tell us at what temperature to bake anything at in any of these recipes. However, most say to cook in a slow oven, a hot oven, a quick oven. This just says to bake. It doesn't tell us at what temperature. So I guess we're going to take a guess here. I'm going to do kind of go in the middle-ish and do maybe either 375 or 400 makes the most sense to me for fish. Uh, I th yeah, I think we'll do 400. This doesn't appear to be super browned on top. However, it does appear to be done inside. Everything appears to be flaking. And so I think I'll take it out at this point just to avoid overcooking it completely and there isn't much of the pan gravy left inside after we baste it a few times, so I think this is just gonna have to be as good as it's gonna get. The hot platter is out of the oven, and I'm going to try very hard to pull this out carefully without breaking it before we put our Spanish sauce on top. Oh, I'm already breaking it a little. Oh, we broke it. That's okay. Let's 
got a little a, a tail a different type of tail and we have one more piece in here but there isn't much room left on that platter so I think we will stop plating there and this will end up just going in the leftovers anyway The Spanish sauce is pretty thick, so I'm gonna spoon it over instead of pouring over. I did end up adding, I don't think I got it on camera and I think I forgot to mention it, with the Spanish sauce, I did end up adding a little more of the tomato juice or sauce out of the can because after cooking it and trying to break down the pulp of these tomatoes, it had gotten pretty dry. So I did add maybe a quarter cup more of the tomato sauce just to thin this out a little bit and give it a little more i guess it doesn't seem like a sauce so much as a, a topping but give it a little bit more liquid so it wasn't completely dry and before we get started eating i just want to show off my tablecloth a little bit the apron that i was wearing and this tablecloth are some, I guess some, some vintage pieces I picked up in Italy and brought home. I'm working on editing all of that footage. So hopefully in the next few weeks, I'll have it out and you can watch when I purchased this tablecloth and the apron. Uh, and I did have, you see another plate there. I have some off camera help that stopped by. So I actually have someone who can eat this food with me. They don't want to be on camera. So they're just going to give their opinion. They, they'd like to try the food, but just not be on camera to try it. So let's get to getting this fish here plated and let's try it out. We have our fish with the Spanish sauce, the stuffed peppers and the cream macaroni. I, Looking at the menu, I would assume that the fish is our main course and that these two are sides. However, maybe the fish is supposed to be the appetizer and I guess, all of these could be the main course for me. So stuffed peppers is a main course, pasta is a main course, and fish is a main course. So all of these could be the main course. I'm not quite sure. We're gonna try them all around the same time. I have them on the plate at the same time, but we are going to start with the fish. It smells much better cooked than it did coming out of that package beforehand. It was a, a little bit strong and it, it still has that fishy smell a little bit now, but not quite as overwhelming as when I pulled it out of the package. And I don't actually, oh, with the, the fish, I don't smell the tomatoes as strong as I thought that I would. Oh, that's pretty good. The, the tomato sauce on top is, the, the fish is mild. The sauce I thought would be a little more flavorful. I don't taste the bacon in it as much as I thought I would. It's the, the sauce, Spanish sauce, the tomatoes, onions, bacon, also almost a little bit underwhelming compared to my expectation. This is all very good together, but I think I would like it with a little more, maybe some lemon on top or maybe a little vinegar in the tomato sauce something to brighten it up just a little bit a little bit of acid for this but overall uh, this is uh not bad at all it tastes way better than it smelled initially now my off camera helped tried the fish they were not super impressed with it they thought it was pretty bland they added some salt and pepper and even with the salt and pepper they just um were not it wasn't their favorite thing. They didn't think it was gross or anything. They just thought it was a little bit boring and bland. Now let's try the creamed macaroni. And they have also tried both of these already. So I have their opinion on that. There isn't a strong overwhelming smell coming from this, which you would expect it tastes or it's, there isn't any, I think bold flavors going on in here, bold smells. Just you can smell the pasta and you can smell the uh, milk a little bit, I think. For creamed macaroni, knowing what this is, I don't think it's too bad. Now I am using gluten-free pasta, so 
the texture might be a little bit different. Knowing that, I, I think maybe what might be difficult here, so my off-camera help also didn't really like this either. They weren't a fan just in general overall. Also felt it was a little bit bland. The um, looking at it, I think the expectation is that it should taste like macaroni and cheese, but it's not macaroni and cheese. It's just creamed macaroni. So I would agree that it, it is a little bit plain and bland. However, if you're expecting that and that's maybe you want something a little neutral to try or to have on your plate with some other bold flavors, this might be a good option for that. It's it's not bad, but I would agree it is it's rather plain. You may have noticed there is a cake pan that has popped up behind me magically while I'm doing this and the recipe for the cottage pudding said to serve it warm. So I didn't want to pull it out earlier and let it cool completely while we were eating our dinner or even before we were eating our dinner and then we end up eating it cool or cold because it specified to serve it warm. So I, I just pulled it out. It is going to cool here while we eat the stuffed pepper. Then we move on to our salad course and hopefully it will be at the right temperature to serve once we're finished with all of that. And we'll also see how putting the parchment paper on the bottom helps it to come out. Now our stuffed pepper. My off camera help said that so far out of the three things they liked this pepper the best, they expected to taste the stuffing a little more, but they said the predominant flavor is definitely the pepper. They did not notice the flavor of the egg. They could see it in there, but they didn't really notice the flavor of the egg. And they, while they didn't love the stuffed pepper, they said they, they wouldn't make any of these things again or suggest making them again, but they weren't terrible to try. They just weren't worthy of trying again, I guess. I've not had deviled ham before. And I probably should have looked at the ingredients first, but I didn't want to give myself an expectation for this. And now that I'm thinking of it, I definitely should have looked at the ingredients first, knowing that I'm not supposed to have gluten, just in case there was gluten in there. However, uh, tasting it, it tastes kind of sweet, like there's nutmeg in there maybe. There, there's something that's a little on the sweeter side for me, and that, that was not my expectation eating this. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm a little bit crazy and tasting things that aren't there, but there's something on the sweeter side. Cloves, no, not cloves, maybe mace, mace or nutmeg. I don't smell it. I smell the onion and the pepper, a little bit of the egg. I can't say that I super smell the ham in there. And when I when we were cooking it, I could smell the ham. I thought it kind of smelled like cat food or dog food. I think I mentioned that. But I don't get that smell after cooking it with everything else in here. I would also agree I don't taste the egg in here. And I'm wondering what the point of adding the chopped up eggs were. Was it for nutrition? But we already have more protein in this meal than we've seen in a lot of other meals. And there's always plenty of fat throughout the meals. Was it because there's some white and yellow mix? Was it for color? Was it just because they had extra eggs at the time? I'm, I'm curious about what the reasoning for adding the eggs was. But I'd say the same thing. So far of all of the different things I've had pepper stuffed with, this is not bad. It doesn't taste bad at all. It's different, but I probably would not make this again. And yeah, actually uh, I would agree with my off camera help. And of all of these recipes, none of them, I think they're, they're just okay. I wouldn't make any of those again. Let's try our asparagus. Here's my little asparagus plate, my little salad. I assume probably maybe a serving would be a little less than this, maybe cut in half 
for a serving of salad. I'm not really sure because it doesn't really say anything about the recipe. It just says asparagus tips with mayonnaise. As we said before, I've chosen to use raw asparagus and just mayonnaise on the side. I'm guessing maybe we just dip it or maybe it was supposed to go on top. I'm not sure, but I already have a prediction on how I'll feel about this. I love asparagus cooked or raw, so I'm going to love the asparagus. I don't like mayonnaise, so I'm gonna hate the mayonnaise. Mixed together, I probably will feel that the mayonnaise has ruined the asparagus and I'll want to eat just the asparagus after this without the mayonnaise, but let's see what happens. Smells like mayonnaise. You know what? Maybe this project is getting me used to eating mayonnaise a little more. And because I have eaten it so much more in the last six to nine months that I'm starting to acquire a taste for it, I'm not sure, but I don't hate it as much as I thought I would. I don't love it. It's not something that I'm like, ooh, yes, let's get a big old scoop of mayonnaise on this and eat it like a psychopath. But I don't want to immediately vacate it out of my mouth upon putting it in there. And our cottage pudding isn't cool yet. It's still pretty hot. It does say serve hot. It doesn't say anything about unplating it. So now I'm kind of wondering, do we let it cool enough to take it out of the cake pan or do we just cut it right out of there while it's still hot? And it does say pudding, not cake. So now I'm kind of rethinking how I thought before. And I think we're just going to go ahead and while that is still pretty hot, but not piping hot, we're gonna take it right out and serve it with that lemon sauce. So I'm not really sure, are we supposed to slice this and serve it like a slice of cake? Do we just scoop it out? Or, I'm sure it's very obvious. Those of you who eat cottage pudding, help me out here. I know I'm gonna screw it up the first time, but I think I'm just going to kind of scoop it out and put the lemon sauce over top. No, no, this is too cakey. I can't do that. I'm gonna cut it like a cake. I changed my mind. Hold on. Feels like it's not quite done in the middle and I don't know if it's supposed to be that way because it's a pudding or because it is quite brown on the sides if it's supposed to be, hmm. I don't know here. Kind of cakey, but kind of underdone. Maybe that's because it's still hot. Maybe it needed to cool, and that's why that texture is like that. But it says to serve it hot. Help me out here. I know all of you out there are saying, this idiot doesn't know what she's doing with this cottage pie because you probably are very familiar with it and make it all the time. So, uh, tell me what to do next time. Lemon sauce. Ooh, this is some thick sauce. Holy moly. All right. I also don't think if it were a cake, you wouldn't put sauce on top of a cake. So it should be kind of undercooked. Maybe like this. Maybe this is right. I don't know. I'm hoping. Well, this, the presentation on this is terrible. Pretend that this is beautiful. Just pretend. So here is my kind of ugly piece. And uh, we did use gluten-free flour, but we used the King Arthur gluten-free flour, which is the one-to-one -one ratio. And it's pretty close so far from everything that I have baked. And so I don't think it should have thrown off too much of this. Maybe the texture is different because of it. Maybe not. But let's give this pudding a try. Mm. 
I think I mostly smell the flower. I don't smell the lemon as much as I want to be smelling it. It, the sauce tastes way more lemony than it smells. The cake, I want to try the cake on its own. Or pudding. The pudding kind of tastes like nothing. I think a, an okay vehicle to eat this sauce on, but I'm going to be honest, it's not very good. I, at least in my opinion, the, my off camera help felt that the texture was interesting. And I don't know if it's because this is gluten-free flour. I don't think it would change the flavor. It still kind of tastes like nothing. My off camera help felt that the texture was interesting. They actually said it's kind of neat. They kind of liked it. It's, it's not like bread pudding, but maybe reminiscent of that. And they like the, the lemon with it. They, I think in general, I think they like this much more than I do. I'm, for those of you who are familiar with cottage pudding, how does this recipe compare to what you're used to? And what are your thoughts on this? I'm just, I'm having a hard time with this one. That lemon sauce was really good though. I think you could probably put that on just about anything. I think that would go really nicely on that prune whip that we made last week. That custard sauce was great on it, but this lemon sauce might be even better on it. I think I could find a lot of uses for this. I don't think that's gonna go to waste. Overall though, this menu, I think just seemed strange to me. The combinations of the foods that were on it, the flavors, the just everything in general as a menu just for 2024, maybe in 1924, this menu made sense. But 2024, for me, in my opinion, it just seemed like they picked random things and put it together. Nutrition wise, though, I, although the flavors didn't make sense and the foods didn't make sense flavor wise for me, nutrition wise, it wasn't too bad. We started out, our protein was an excellent lean protein that had some omega-3 fatty acids in it and it had tomatoes in it and onions. So we have a lean protein with a serving of vegetables right there. Then on the side, we have the creamed macaroni. There's not a lot of, I guess, added benefit there. You're not getting a ton of nutrition. Some, some things that your body can use, but you know, other than some quick burst of energy, not a lot going for it there, but your stuffed pepper, you have another serving of vegetables there. And then also you have the protein of the eggs and the deviled ham in there. So I, I think we haven't seen such a protein heavy meal in very often at all. There's several areas in which there is a good amount of protein in this meal. Now, the dessert, I didn't have a ton to offer there. The uh, the lemon sauce, uh, there's a little bit, you know, the lemon juice, there's some, I guess, fruit benefit there, but not a ton. So uh, overall, I while I would give this menu in general, maybe a five out of 10 for nutrition, I might put this at maybe an eight or a nine out of 10. I was kind of impressed nutrition wise with it. Cost wise at first when I went to purchase the fish, the haddock, to buy two pounds, it was a little over $20. I don't know what it's like in your area, but the, the fish here for two pounds is a little over $20. But the rest of the menu was relatively cheap. So I would put this meal for six people between maybe $45 and $60, depending on your area. If you like what you saw today, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel so that you never miss another Sunday dinner. Join us next week where I believe they're having their Easter dinner. We're going to retry veal birds and also we'll have April Fool's eggs. 
See you then. I think this, I don't know if this is plain fabric or if it's a tablecloth, but I think it's adorable and you may see it at the table in an upcoming video again. Actually, by the time I get this edited, you probably will have already seen it because uh, <laughs> it's going to take me forever to get to this point in editing. These are the winners now to get them packed up. Hopefully I can fit them in my luggage. We'll see.